Okay, welcome. This video is called Expert Classroom Management, and that is obviously a central topic in teaching, no matter what level you're teaching at. And we definitely deliver some ideas and tricks and co core concepts that um, I believe you'll find valuable. So managing a classroom effectively requires a combination of personal gravitas, love for the students, self-confidence, plus a wide range of tricks, techniques, and resources. You really need both of those categories. And classroom management is central to and inseparable from the art of teaching. So this module offers advice and techniques that really work wonders in all range of classrooms from kindergarten to universities and the focus in this video is how to get control of unruly classes and unruly students. The first thing to remember is that even in the most unruly classes, most of the disturbance is usually coming from a few individuals or very small groups of students. So the most effective use of your energy is often to identify and focus on those rowdy students and then use the techniques that we're about to give you to acknowledge them and engage them and then get them involved in what's going on in the classroom. And so here's how we do that. Number one, absolutely first, is divide and conquer. Not to use a war term, but hey, we're in the trenches. So split up rambunctious groups. Um, and you do this by kindly asking a few of them to just move to a desk in another part of the room. Usually students will comply with this. Uh, this is typ typically very effective because often groups of friends tend to sit together, so talking in horseplay is pretty much irresistible. When you relocate two members, let's say, of a loud group of four students, suddenly the dynamic changes, the mischievous fun deflates, and suddenly they really have no better option but to pay attention to the lesson. So you can also make the relocation sound like an upgrade. Uh, so Reggie, I need your brain power at the front of the class. Would you please move to a seat up here? Uh, so then it's not, they're, by accepting, they're kind of accepting, yeah, I'm smart and you need me, and rather than you're being punished. It makes them more likely to move. Uh, another hidden bonus here is that often individuals within a disruptive group actually want to be separated from them, but they don't want to be uncool and do it themselves. So they're thankful when you intervene. So that's number one. Number two is learn their names. This is a challenge for some people more than others. I used to always learn all of my students' names. We have a video about that, some very good techniques. I would always learn their names by the third day. Um, now I've been teaching so long that I tend to not uh, and I've heard that once you cram enough num names into your head, you just can't cram anymore, so maybe that's true. But I learn about half of their names, and then by the end of the semester, I'll, I'll know all of their names usually. Um, learning their names is critical for managing a classroom because it call by calling students by name, you let them know that you know who they are and that they will be accountable for what they do. This gives you leverage, and you can put out fires with this. And it's also why it's twice as hard to control classrooms when you're a substitute. Now, if you don't know their names yet, or you're subbing for another teacher, you can resort to addressing them based on what they're wearing. For example, young man in the red shirt, da 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 da, da. I would sometimes actually call students by the name of an attractive celebrity that even vaguely looked like them. And because it's a housed in a compliment, it, it compels them to smile and respond to you and sort of ex accept your directive. So that can work as well. Uh, number three, in a room with a generalized cacophony or din um, where it's just total chaos, you can try this trick. It's, it's, it often can work. Toss out what I call an irresistible fabricated distraction. <laughs> um, so something like, did you guys get your coupons for the free ice cream yet? <clears throat> and you know a lot of heads will turn towards you or who uh who already signed up for the field trip to the cheetos factory you know just something crazy and the more absurd or far-fetched the better because it will inevitably get them to look in your direction and once you have their attention even for just a moment you can begin to shift it onto the activity of the day 
and you, you know something like okay so we'll talk about that in a minute but first we have to go to the assignment of the day and most of them know that you you were kidding about the ice cream or cheetos but no harm is done and you've accomplished your goal you've grabbed their attention okay now this is uh number four is our our one of our ultimate moves and i call it a judo move so if you have one student on a given day or a regular basis that's clearly the loudest most irrepressible student in your class rather than asking them to stop talking which we always do quiet down quiet down quiet down ask him or her to tell a story to the entire class so whatever it is they're talking about celebrate that ask them to share it with the class because as you explain it must be a good story right so that student then has to get the class's attention, the entire class. So he or she is probably good at that since he or she is apparently the ringleader. So these types of students love doing this because it satisfies their need to be the center of attention. And it's a true judo move because you aren't resisting the momentum of the class. You are receiving it and aligning with it. Now, if that student gets shy and doesn't want to tell their story to the entire class, that's great because your loudest student is now quiet. But more likely, they'll tell their story. You can even ask them to come to the front of the class and tell the story. Uh, whether they're in their seat or at the front of the class, after their story, your main goal has been achieved. The class's attention has been focused and gathered to one point in the room. That student has done the heavy lifting for you by quieting the class and focusing their attention. Then you say, who else would like to tell a story? At that point, you've just transferred that power and control that your student worked very hard to generate to yourself. And a lot of people, a lot of students will raise their hands to tell their story, and then suddenly you're the gatekeeper. And r rather than trying to quiet them down, you now become the avenue through which they can be expressive and heard. So your mission is accomplished. And all you have to do now is after you've heard a few of their stories, you tell your story, which introduces the lesson of the day. And then there you go. So this judo move is amazingly effective, and I do hope that you'll use it. That said, on a daily basis, it's important to avoid the trap of consistently giving attention exclusively to a disruptive students while you're putting out fires moment to moment. This may subconsciously cause some students to act out just to get attention from you. So make sure to praise the A students, the respectful students, the cooperative students, um, write their names on the board, say, they, say their names out loud to reward good behavior. And this sends a message that good behavior gets attention as well and, and good attention at that. Uh, another way to keep classes in check and uh, in, in control is to set clear standards for classroom behavior at the beginning of the semester. So one way to implement this is to create a list of behavioral rules at the beginning of the term, distribute it to the class, read through it together, give some time to discuss, and include clear consequences. That can be very helpful. Seven. Ask students to generate ideas for class rules themselves. So students can generate them and then they can vote on them and adopt the rules and consequences on a group as a group. Now, obviously, you will be guiding this. Um, so you can reserve the right to add any rules as needed. Um, and as a supplement or way to process and integrate the class rules, you can give students a journal or informal writing assignment or short quiz to see how they feel about the rules and how they're being implemented. You might be surprised at how involved they would like to be. Um, and often, bad behavior in the classroom upsets students just as much as it bothers you. And their feedback can help you assess their effectiveness and whether or not you're cracking down enough or too much on the usual suspects. So it can be hard to strike that balance and find the line below which you let things go and above which you go to DEFCON 3. So you want them to respect the rules but not feel fearful or terrorized in the classroom by you. It's all about finding that, that balance. Okay, eight, um, you 
You want to administer discipline and consequences dispassionately. This took me a long time to uh, actualize. So try not to take their misbehavior personally, or it can very easily slip into you getting upset, you blaming, you shaming, um, and that can really escalate things, as I'm sure you already know. So be businesslike. And sometimes that can feel dry or cold, but it's much better than being reactive and emotional. So if you can stay neutral and just refer to the rules and the consequences, it feels much easier to deliver and to accept the natural outcome of the behavior that has occurred. So, you know, it's easy to say this, I mean, to, to, you know, to write these words down and say this to you in this video, but it's much harder to do in the heat of the moment. So this might take time to master. Maybe you're already good at this. It took me quite a while. Uh, but when you do, every day will be a lot easier. Dispassionate discipline. That's the way to go. Okay, those are our uh, eight solid ideas. Let's review those very quickly. Uh, so look at your classroom experience. What are your biggest challenges with classroom management? Because if you can zero in on those, then you can understand which techniques you'll need to use. Um, and what's your current classroom uh, you know, rule rubric and management style? Uh, is this approach successful for you? If it is, then you can just move on. Uh, but we can always get a little bit better at classroom management. Uh, which techniques did you learn from this module that you believe you can incorporate? And then pick three ideas from this video and determine how and when you can implement them. And then try them out, notice the results, and uh, as always, we'd like you to share them with your online support group if you have joined, uh, and it will help others. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, this is one of my favorite videos, so I hope you get a lot of helpful nuggets out of it.